It was all unknown at first. Uh, we didn't really know what was happening. I think at the beginning, there was a bit of fear that I think that we all had. We didn't know what to expect. We didn't know the severity of, of what this virus could do. So we were really looking to uh, make sure everybody was going to be safe. With COVID-19 was really interesting for me because I had actually been on maternity leave and was coming back in right in the middle of the pandemic. It's the last vacation that as a full family, because my son was graduating and graduated last year, we drove to Seattle and from Seattle to Japan, Japan to Indonesia to Bali, and then two other plane flights to a remote island I had that, I guess, added element of a little bit of stress that not only had I taken time off work and was coming back in, but the whole realm of the world had changed when I was coming um, back to work. We were on top of, of a cliff overlooking the surf. And when we landed, you know, we heard that a pandemic was declared. I originally think that people didn't like to be, you know, felt as though they, they didn't want the control. They didn't want to be controlled or wear it. But uh, I think when they saw the risk of what was going on in the world, everyone got on board. Everyone got on board and they were doing, you know, doing the right thing to protect not only them, their families and their co-workers, which was very important. None of us had any experience with a global pandemic. Right out of the gate, we weren't 100% sure exactly what, what was going to be happening. And so COVID has definitely uh, opened up not just safety concerns, but just uh, you know, commerce across the world. We didn't really know what the risks of COVID were or what we should do to protect ourselves. Um, so that made it uh, extra challenging. You know, every day was different. There was new information coming out. And I think for me, I really just wanted to rally our team to really be prepared to uh, pick up the phone or answer emails. So for us, uh, we had to slowly figure out how we can do it. Uh, so it was a big challenge and we didn't know if one of us will get sick what to do. The initial reaction in the beginning was largely emotional uh, as the science really wasn't quite there yet. But that was quickly um, managed through science-based approach to this pandemic. So uh, we took uh, uh, cues from uh, what the government laid out for us to do. So the government of British Columbia um, as well as the government of Canada, but also we had uh, looked to our leadership to uh, develop something quickly in place just to keep our uh, employees, keep us safe. It's something that we have never heard of. Or this is something that's what's going on in the world. Um, so the, what we need to do was we need to communicate our employees what's going on and what our protocols are. It starts, of course, with protecting the worker. That's, you know, that's your primary uh, objective. That's your purpose. But at the same time, we're in, we're in business. And in order to succeed in business, you have to get everybody pulling in the same direction. It was, it, it was just overwhelming, it really was. Keeping people safe here in the cellar, um, the challenges we had, um, very fortunate um, when COVID first hit, um, we were in our off season, well not off season, but in our slower season here in the cellar. Um, uh, mainly just getting ready for bottling. Yeah, I was nervous, but when I reached out to my employer, there was lots of conversations. I was given our handbook on COVID-19, so I knew fully what to expect when I came back to work, and I felt really comfortable and I felt protected and safe. Yeah, with a winery, we have a unique, I guess, experience with COVID-19 because we're manufacturing and we're also tourism, so consumer facing. Well, you think about the poultry, I mean, uh, you, you, the poultry processors, it's not like you can put a, a, you know, a bunch of poultry barns on hold. Those birds are entering into a, a part of maturity. If they don't go into the system, you know, they unfortunately have to destroy them, right? So there's, it's not, it's not even that it's, you know, this little thing. It's a massive knock-on effect. 
We didn't escape the impact that that pandemic has had on our organization. It was significant. So businesses, you know, at the very beginning, we didn't know a lot about this virus. And industry never stopped. They've been on the front lines since the very beginning, learning at the same time as the scientists, as our health professionals. There were a number of challenges that we had to adapt to through the COVID, the early COVID stages. My management team met every day because things were changing at such a rapid pace. And the fact that we had to keep on top of making sure that we were meeting the safety protocols that the federal and the provincial government were bringing forward. Looking for personal protective equipment. You know, at the beginning, everybody wanted N95 masks, you know, respirators to protect everybody from the potential of that virus being there for not getting into our, our lungs. But we didn't have enough, you know, and the healthcare industry needed those masks. We all did at a period of time, unless it was, you know, you physically had to be here. There was some, you know, doing checks and um, some type of meetings had to happen face to face. But generally uh, for a period of probably six to eight months, uh, most of us all worked from home. So we had an environment, uh, even today, there's probably 20% of our workforce is out of the office here is working from home. A lot of the office team can go and work from home. You know, we can send our engineers home, we can send our administration team home, we can send our finance team home. We have that luxury on the office side. We do not have that luxury on the manufacturing side. As for our, 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 our safety culture and the pandemic, or many things can be said. Our, our culture certainly helped us a lot. In manufacturing, um, sometimes you have specific processes that have been perfected over years where we found the most efficient and safest way. I think one of the biggest challenges is that uh, a majority of our team are essential service workers. They're production staff. They have to be in the building um, to do their job. It's not like they could bring a box home uh, to form it and then bring it to a customer. Um, so to be able to have our team come into work feeling safe, feeling healthy, um, and that they know that their coworkers are also healthy, um, that was a really big challenge for us. When we put a new product into production, it has uh, basically about eight days before it's, the process is complete. Any kind of interruption in between that eight days most certainly would result in a product that is not usable. And so if we would have had a wave come into our facility of, of COVID positive cases, uh, most likely we would have had our operation shut down, all, all, most likely temporary, but it would have been shut down and any shutdown in any capacity would be uh, a disaster for us. So with manufacturing, they kind of just kept going on. We still have to make wine, it's still safe to do that. But when it came to actually accepting guests at the tasting room, we had to shut down for part of last year. Um, and so that was really interesting to be a part of. It was, you know, right when our season's supposed to be ramping up and getting really busy and we're shut down. And then once everything was opening up more and we were allowed to accept guests, we had a really comprehensive safety plan in place to make sure that we were protected and also our guests had a safe place to come enjoy a really wonderful experience at the winery. One of the very first things we did was we implemented the temperature checks and then the COVID uh, forms that came in with the different uh, symptoms that people were having. I think one of the most frustrating uh, aspects from the employee's perspective working on the machines was the wearing of the mask and the fogging up of the safety glasses or their glasses that they're wearing. And then also at uh, some employees having to wear gloves. It's not so easy to, uh, to pack the product with a glove on, so they had to take that off. So we implemented sanitizing of all the machines uh, at start of shift and end of shift. So the shift that came in at, uh, at 8 o'clock would sanitize. When they left at uh, 8 o'clock, 8 p.m., they would sanitize. So the next shift comes in, sanitizes. When they leave, they sanitize. Through our, you know, hiring and retention process, we have obviously a whole bunch of policies and procedures that are shared with the staff or onboarding the staff. But training is extremely important here for us. Um, of course, in the winemaking side, that they learn all their safety protocols, just the day-to-day -day safety things. But in the tasting room, we have to be careful. But we're all about you know, guest experience and having a really great time and providing the best winery experience in BC. And so we were trying to find ways how we could keep doing that. My role with the Alliance is a safety advisor, and I'm also the combustible dust specialist. Well, a lot of our work that we do with clients is, is right on site. So we had to go from being there on site to doing it virtually, which is a little bit more difficult.
We were hit hard at AEM, but it could have been a whole lot worse had it not been for the efforts of our Joint Health and Safety Committee and all of the employees that are here because it was through their efforts and the implementation of the protocols that were required and their ability to follow those protocols that, that kept us from getting any worse than we were at the height of this pandemic. And it was just a matter of tweaking it for their type of business and the number of people that they had. Uh, I think a lot of it had to do with building configurations. Some uh, employers had larger spaces to work with and other employers had not much space to work with. So distance is a huge thing in this situation. They understand they have to do something but they're not really sure on what's going to be effective and how they're going to actually make it work. So that's really where we help, is in the actual implementation of the plan. The change is tough, and there was resistance, but I think the resistance was the result of not understanding fully what it was we were trying to accomplish, and I'm not sure that anybody really knew. But they were a strong group, and over time, in a short period of time, they came to realize that this was to the benefit of everybody here at AEM, and everybody has complied ever since. So how can we keep our employees apart? How can we do this? Well, what kind of controls can we put into place? Are there the plexiglass screens, or is it distancing, or is it timing our breaks separately so that we can keep our numbers down, or is it putting a tent outside so that we can have certain parts of our process outside to give us more space? So most of, I think, a lot of the people know the answer. They just need to run it by someone to see if it makes sense. So we have to make some modifications add face, face shields instead of uh, safety glasses in certain situations. Um, just, uh, just shifted everything around a little. When it all happened, we had to really quickly develop uh, COVID protocols, uh, personal protective equipment. We had to use you know, masks and face shields, and we had to get employees comfortable with wearing these things, which was a challenge. We also needed to put barriers up in between lines. So that social distance aspect is quite hard, particularly in a shop floor scenario, mm -hmm. uh, where you've got guys that need to help lift parts together or just naturally have to work together. So a greater concentration on PPE and the use of hand cleaners, etc. Mm -hmm. And those aren't always easy to engineer around uh, when we need to physically distance workers, for instance, or. Um, you know, bring in a control like a mask uh, can be a little difficult uh, just because we've worked on having that process to where it's at today. Um, so we've kind of struggled with, with figuring out the best way to change our processes to both keep our workers safe and, and still make them be able to do their job. One of the challenges of food processing and food manufacturing is a lot of the actual processes themselves involve people being in the same space close together or being part of an assembly line. Let's say social distancing, cleaning schedules. Now the benefit, I would guess, of being a food manufacturer is you're already somewhat of an expert in hygiene, um, and you're already an expert in processes and SOPs. So you already have that knowledge base and, and those tools that you can draw on to expand your SOPs and processes. Most organizations, they struggle with creating time for training, but at PFG, that is a different story, like the organizational owners were very clear from the very beginning that we need to build a strong health and safety culture. People may not realize safety is uh, training is expensive. Uh, you have to double up the people uh, if you want to train thoroughly, if you want to verify comprehension. We don't save an effort, like we would train and train and train and retrain as we, as we introduce new measures. I've, I've definitely felt safe coming to work and I do know that other staff feel safe as well looking after their own families and their own health too but also the health of our guests being you know front facing with guests that you know we have barriers in place we have you know signage to make sure people are distanced apart. In fact throughout the business whereby we staggered shift times we staggered lunch breaks and coffee breaks we provided staff the opportunity to work from home we provided digital software to our salespeople as well as engineering and quality so they could perform meetings uh, right from the comfort of either a their home or also through the through our building here our business there are a lot of changes a lot of new ways of doing business i think that the it really did improve some of our communication because you could not make an assumption that someone knows what you're talking about when you don't see them 
So we had, uh, we had to improve our daily meetings. We had to improve our, our communication deliberately as opposed to when you work in an office, sometimes it's by osmosis. You know, you all meet, you all have a chit chat, you see someone down the hall. Well, you didn't have that ability to do that anymore. So we had to focus on direct communication in a new type of environment, which was challenging. So we had to really um, adapt and move to online sales much more than we've ever done in the past. You know, anywhere from hosting online Zoom wine tastings to uh, interesting packages through our e-commerce, um, engaging on social media more. Over the last couple of years, we've really been building a safety culture and earning the trust of our staff. And so when we have controls that we put in for COVID, a lot of our staff bought in really quickly because they because we built this program that shows that um, our, our program is to s keep them safe and support them and you know so we really didn't have a lot of pushback from our staff. Once we were starting to ramp up uh, production, getting ready for harvest, we had to bring in uh, seasonal workers um, to meet the requirements and demands that we have. It was interesting, um, there was a lot of people afraid to travel and a lot of our um, interns that we bring in into the cellar are uh, traveling winemakers, a traveling uh, cellar crew. So we wanted to make sure that we had something in place before they came, so when people were applying for the jobs, they know that they, when they come here, they would uh, be in a safe environment, they would be in an environment where they felt protected. Our employees worked really well in terms of the changes. It was difficult though, because we were constantly changing. We would say one thing this week, next week we were changing direction and it made it difficult and this is where it was really important because every two weeks I put out uh, State of the Nation communications to the staff to give them updates of where we were with, with, with respect to all the protocols and procedures that we had to follow. The fact that we were deemed an essential service given the fact that we were supplying product to the medical as well as the transportation markets. The transportation markets were very important and significant in terms of COVID relief because they would be transporting vaccines, food, water. So we had to stay open. So it required me to be here actually a lot more than I thought it would be. I'm a type A individual and I love my work, but I also love my employees too. And you know, I saw what the COVID pandemic was doing to a number of our employees. The emotional impact was pretty quick and you know, even for myself, I found myself dealing with emotions that I hadn't experienced in my career before. Um, just the uncertainty of, I have a small young family, you know, what it means, what would it mean if I brought something home to them, or what happens if they brought something home and I took it to work? Um, what did it mean for our jobs and our, our financial security? What did it mean for our health and our health security? One of the big challenges was my wife was working full time. We had one kid in daycare and one in school, elementary um, school. and. Uh, uh, my wife had to work from home and the schools closed for a period of time and she had to be a full-time mom, be a full-time teacher and work full-time um, for her career and it was just really taxing on her. And being in the production side of things, there's a lot of hands-on work so there wasn't a lot of things I could do from home and help out and tag team on the, the, the child raising and the child care thing so it all fell on her plate. And uh, she came to me one day and she's like, I can't do it. She actually had to, to, to leave her job uh, to be able to care for the kids and make sure uh, things didn't get too crazy at home. And that was uh, a hard hit for us because she, um, she's a professional woman and uh, is very driven, career driven and career focused. So it was a, a big, big toll on her. And, so ultimately the biggest challenges in the beginning were just no one knew exactly what we were getting into. So I don't think anyone was mentally prepared for this pandemic, but it could be anywhere. So that alone is mentally challenging to comprehend. My greatest concern became for the mental health and welfare of our employees shortly after the, the realization of the pandemic set in because I could see this was having a mental impact on a lot of people. Key people that I might have never thought this could have happened to was having a mental effect on these people. I was very concerned. Yeah, with COVID-19, it was nerve wracking to have a, a new you know, young family um, being a first time mom. And so 
was very hard in, on our family way of connectedness in our community and our support systems because everything had to be reduced greatly. We don't have grandparents that are able to take care of our son very close by. And so like I had mentioned that there's a lot of times where one of us works in the morning um, at our job on location and then we'll come home in the afternoon to take care of our son and then the next person goes to work and then works for the remainder of the day. So sometimes you know, really grateful for our employers for being really flexible and supportive through all of this. Um, yeah, everyone's in the same boat essentially, right? And so, you know, it's okay to go take care of your family and still do your job. And the biggest problem that we actually have to manage with mental health is stigmatism, saying, I don't need to go for help, I'm a big tough guy. Right? You're a big tough guy, I don't need to go see someone because I'm stressed or because I'm depressed. But the problem is that the further you go down that hole, the tougher it is for you to get out. You know, I'm used to that human interaction. I'm used to being able to see, you know, people's emotions and read their body language. And now I'm only seeing it from the neck up. And so um, I found that although working from home gave me, gave me a sense of life work balance in some ways, because in some ways I was able to kind of shut it off at the end of, uh, at the, end of the day. And I must admit, I had to start turning off the television. I had to start turning off the radio and stop listening to some of this stuff because it was getting in my head where I was becoming somewhat just negative about this is getting worse, the, the death toll, the, the impact of lives, the loss of jobs, and, and really wanted to make sure that that impact didn't hit our world. Not being able to be as social when you're wearing this PPE was definitely a challenge. It adds another entire layer of something that can make your day difficult and, and that's, when, that's when you see workplace injuries is when uh, a worker is focused on something else, when they're distracted, when they're you know, not fully present in their task. So when you add a complication like mental health and you have to worry about your family, your, about your company, about your job personally, you know, it just adds another hazard to every workplace in every task all the time. And I, I really, as a professional and in my personal life, um, found it really hard. I, I missed being around people and I missed uh, that opportunity to, to interact face to face without, without masks and see everyone smiles. One difficulty for, for that, that we obviously had is communication, like to start communicating when half your face is covered, that presents a challenge especially when you do training in a noisy environment. It's very, very difficult to communicate freely, express yourself and make sure that the other person, the new employee comprehends and fully understands. You are missing lots of the facial expression that in many ways lead you to understand and to see what's going on. We learn to work with it, but uh, obviously that's something that we could not compromise. Um, and then the anxiety levels of employees was a, was a tremendous challenge. Everybody was very concerned around the pandemic in general, um, but that, that, was, that was very difficult to manage. Just people's mental health has, has continued to be a challenge going forward. And uh, I think one of the major um, things that we did from a perspective from the company, we, we became very understanding to that stress level and we accommodated as much as we could accommodate people to take time off from work. So they, really there was, a, you know, there was a camaraderie between the employees as well. Luckily, no one in my family or friendship have been really sick with COVID and luckily no one at work has really been impacted either. Yeah, when it comes to the safety of you know, myself but also our fellow employees, I really felt my personal experience being you know, a little bit more elevated than the normal person having um, a compromised immune system, that it really made me be more aware and also to be lead by example of like, I want others to treat me the same way that I would like to be treated. And so I want the extra level of protection for myself and my family. And so I'm gonna also give that to other people so they reciprocate it back to myself. I felt pretty safe coming to work during the pandemic. Um, they put a lot of measures in to help eliminate any like things that might even be a concern. One of the secret areas that was really tough to watch and manage was mental health issues. That we had a lot of employees who I saw probably struggled a lot more than I thought they were struggling. And it was then that we said, we created what we called the Emergency Family Assistance Program. So through that benefit, our employees were able to access trained professionals to get counseling, to help them through these times, because these were 
unprecedented times that people struggled. They were always unsure what was happening with their job, with the future. And that was part of my job to make sure they knew that they knew from me that they were secure, they were safe, they had a job and they were going to be coming back day after day after day to do the job that I needed them to do. You would see different behavior from employees. You know, you know what type of, how they would do their work, how, uh, you know, how diligent they were. And all of a sudden they weren't as diligent, they were forgetting things, they were missing things. The learnings that we've had, and I think many will, will carry through, especially the mental health in terms of being able to, to really integrate programs that address that, because it's a critical component. One of the uh, peers told us that they had gone and had training with respect to mental health and this was one of the things that she stated. And so I was able to take that information and relay it back to our people here to see if they needed more help because we were just thinking that you know our employee was just not doing a good job. Well, it wasn't that at all. It was the fact that they were struggling through the COVID pandemic, like all of us were. I try, try and try and loosen up uh, where we can, if we can, in the workplace to make the employees feel good about being, about being here. And as I said, they, the one message that kept on coming back to us is that the employees felt, they, they felt that this is the safest place to be in because, because we, if I may say, because we were so rigid about it. We've taken it very seriously and for the right reasons. We don't want anyone um, coming to work if they're sick and so therefore people, our staff have taken it very seriously as well. Um, and they're doing the right thing, but it's finding that balance of um, accommodation and still being able to keep up with our customer and our production and business demand. For us, you know, the best thing that we could do as safety leaders was to make sure our doors were open to talk, to make sure that we kept an eye out for the signs of, you know, people struggling with mental health. And there is so much research going on now on how difficult dealing with mental health is. And with the federal government adding psychological safety as a part of the mandate as an employer, you know, it just adds another, it just adds another avenue where we can help our staff, where we can show them that we care. It's, it's hidden, you don't always see a lot of, a lot of the, the, the things, that, the struggles that people are going through. Um, and obviously having an open door policy is, is really important, that, that you can express to people if, if you have issues, that please bring them forward. We put up posters, we, we had meetings to explain what it was for. You know, we had a lot of benefits in place that we never really used, you know. Um, then the pandemic happened and all of a sudden we we're, oh, that's, that's what that's good for, or that's what that we can use. And, and so um, we've always had an open door policy and I just, again, doubled down on all those messages, made sure staff knew they could come and, and talk to me, not just at work, but call me at night, um, take advantage of, of any kind of communication wherever you feel comfortable. And I had quite a few conversations with staff outside of normal hours just to, to help them, you know, either traverse the benefits or just to talk just to say hi. Making sure that we're always thinking about mental anxiety in the workplace, um, which is getting more and more challenging. Uh, aside from COVID, um, mental wellness is a key contributor to problems in the world today. And I think that's one of the takeaways we're gonna take from COVID is to continue to manage that side. I think COVID made us all take a step back and reevaluate, you know, just how we did work, how much time we worked, I mean, certainly working from home, shifting and, and moving all of our staff to an at-home environment was kind of unreal. I've never been in that environment before um, where all of our staff were now working remotely. There's so many different things you have to think about and prepare for and, and provide leadership on it. I think we've all come to work when we've had a cold. We've all come to work when we haven't felt our best. Changing our habits to to stay home when we're sick and, and not transmit any illness to each other. So I'll say that that, that is one I think that we've all learned, that it's okay to stay home. And, and our hybrid work model, I would say that we've learned as, a, as an organization, there are things that we can do better, you know, in, in, in adopting a hybrid work model of reaching out to our members um, and accessing more of them through a virtual connection. COVID has really taught us that no 
program is perfect and that no, we aren't able to foresee every single hazard that'll ever come up. And so instead of reacting to any specific hazard, um, instead we teach our staff how to make sure that when they do a task, do a job of any kind, that they're doing it the safest way possible and then they're able to adapt as different hazards come up, anything that we can't foresee like COVID. You know, we've learned a lot in this rapid digitalization age of, of connecting people, of training people, of, of enabling those that couldn't necessarily afford the time. Ensure our first and foremost obligation is the, the safety of our employees. How do we make sure they stay safe on one hand? On the other hand, that they are comfortable working, communication, open communication and transparency all along. As much, provide as much details as you can and, uh, and get, the, get the employees involved in believing in what we are doing. Ensuring that people are keeping safe all the time. Something which we're going to keep on implementing in the future. We were, you know, of course nervous that we wouldn't see the same kind of numbers come through the tasting room. And we were very surprised that our local support has been tremendous, that we've seen people over and over again. People came out to really make sure that we were supported and um, that was really great to see. It's, it's changed our planning, it's changed what we can look forward to, and, and what most of which is out of our control, which has been challenging. You know, you look at the sacrifices that has been made, you know, by, and, and many, everyone has had, everyone has sacrificed something. Everyone just, uh, you know, uh, did their own sacrifice and also to help the company um, survive uh, during this pandemic. And there are, you know, a few different things I would say. If I had to pick one thing that I would say I'm most proud of is the fact that we managed to keep the disease out of our operations. We did have a different wing of our organization had one COVID positive case, um, but even then there was no transmissions within the organization. One thing that has really made me proud of our team over this last year is just our resilience and our innovation, which um, innovation is actually one of our key values here at the Monte Creek Winery. And we just really looked for ways how we could continue to obviously be open and uh, working but just to also have that elevated experience that yes, we're in a pandemic. So it's all of us together, we as one team and uh, our employees giving all those feedback to us. That's what made us like, we work together and then one team and I'm always proud to say this and I'm saying this again, as of today, um, no positive cases at all in our brewery. I think that, you know, we've, We've shown our staff that our safety team trusts them to make the right decision and that not only does their behavior affect themselves, uh, but also all of their coworkers. And having such a strong team, uh, it's, it's pretty easy to have, have our staff do the right thing and take care and be stewards of their own safety. Um, you know, when we're not around, when we're not there to enforce, um, you know, we've shown that we trust them enough to make the right decision. There's been so many challenges, there's been so many um, difficult situations that have come out of the blue, not things that we were anticipating. And the thing that I think that I'm the most proud of with our safety program is that we were able to stay the course. I think basically every single, from HR perspective, every single employee who is coming to work during the last year is a hero. Because you know, you can freak out and stay home. Instead, of they all came to work and they supported the company, they supported you know, each other. My heroes are our employees that uh, kept showing to work. Uh, uh, they are not the ones that probably are seen in the public eyes. I'm definitely looking forward to you know life post pandemic that I would love to be around family and friends a lot. I want that for my new family as well, my son to have those connections. I would imagine 10, 20 years from now when I'm looking back at this experience, um, I will almost in, in a way be thankful for, for a lot of it because what it really made me realize is the importance of relationships. Um, I had, uh, not that I didn't, you know, give what I thought I needed to, but what I didn't realize was, you know, working from home for the first time in my career, I could say bye to my children before they went to school. It's just an extraordinary time for them to be able to, to achieve all of this in, in continuing to, to move forward with their business to enable it to, to survive and thrive. My own experience um, 
through all this uh, and bringing that to work has helped me to understand what other people are going through as well because it wasn't easy for us. Just got together, formed a task force and just did amazing things to keep the company going and to keep everybody safe. I'm so proud to, to work there. You know, character is what you do when no one's looking. That they were liable to their to their coworkers to to make sure that safety was not only something they did at work, but it was something that they took home with them as well. Do I think we'll merge as a stronger company? Completely. We've already done that. That we've been able to dive deeper into you know who we are, what we're doing, and why we're we doing it. And said it was it was a whole team effort. It really was, and. Um, and, and that, that was worth it to me.